You were not meant to be a slave to the grind. You were not meant to trade your life force for money. You can escape gravity. You can unlock your life. You got this. Let's go. Hello and welcome to Unlock Your Life. This is your host, Jenny Smith. And guys, I got a guest today. I'm excited about talking with you or talking to you with him, Chris Larson. This guy's an investor, author, sales dude. He's the founder and principal of Next Level Income. And he retired from the medical device industry. Now he helps people become financially independent. So this guy is getting into car washes. He knows a whole lot about infinite banking. We're going to get into that. He's a multifamily guy, right? That's the holy grail of real estate investing. And we're going to just get into it with him and say, how are you helping people? How did you generate you know, over a billion dollars in real estate acquisitions? And what are you working on now? And uh, how can we help the listeners that are tuning in today? So welcome, Chris. Jennings, I'm fired up. I'm happy to be here with you today. Thanks, man. Thanks. So you started in medical sales and you made the jump. I know that's a grinder of an industry. So tell us about that. Yeah. So I'm glad you asked me that question because I get asked that a lot. They're like, how did, Chris, how did you transition from this industry? And a lot of people, a lot of coaching clients I work with, they feel trapped, you know, and it's, this happens with a lot of professionals, Jennings. You know, we're similar age. You know, you, you go down a professional path, you follow the traditional wisdom, which is, you know, I'm going to go to school. I'm going to get good grades. I'm going to, you know, put my head down. I'm going to work really hard. And next thing you know, you pop your head up, you know, in your, in your thirties, you know, you're, you're kind of cruising in your career, you're making good money. And you're like, well, is this what it is? Is this what's going on? And you know, a lot of people call this a midlife crisis, right? You're like, you're not happy. You've done all the right things and you almost feel trapped. And this happens a lot with high stress careers because you focus and you go down a path like I did and you're making a lot of money, but I was on call for 12 years of my career. I worked, you know, I had stretches Jennings where I was in the hospital three days straight on call, like slept in the hospital, like three days in a row, you know, and this is with young kids. It's really tough. Now, fortunately for me, I was turned on to real estate at a younger age. And I talk about this in my book, which I'm happy to share with your audience here, which they can get on my website, nextlevelincome.com. But I bought my first property at 21 and I had this investor mindset and I said, okay, I'm going to put together a plan where I can be financially independent before the time I'm 40. So I won't be trapped. And Mm. it allowed me to stay motivated, keep my head down and stay focused. But, you know, I still went through periods where I thought, what the heck am I doing here? And and unfortunately, yes, I did get to that point where I could walk away when the industry, the business, it wasn't as fun as it used to be. But more importantly, my boys are 11 and, and actually 13 here in less than a week. And, you know, I wanted to be able to spend more time with them, do things like you know, coach their teams, their sports teams, or take vacations and be able to turn my phone off, which, you know, for, like I said, for 12 years, there were months, there were weeks, months that I was not able to do that. Yeah. I just wrote a, um, I was just writing like a post for my group and talking about, you talked about how you had a plan, right? You grinded, you were still working hard, head down, but you had a plan. And I feel like, or I know a lot of people, there's two scenarios, right? You've got yeah. You're going to be five years older. In five years, you're going to be there. And you're either going to wake up you know, in the exact same position you're at, except for five years older, and you're still grinding, and you're still doing stuff you don't want to do, and you still feel yeah. trapped. Or you started five years ago building something that's going to unlock your life, that's going to change your trajectory and create that freedom that we're all running yeah. after. But you have yeah. to start, and life is so daily. And before you know it, it slips by if you don't have you know, your eye on the prize. That's exactly right. That's exactly right. And that's why, you know, I love what you do. I love how you help give people a plan and a path and the resources to change. And you don't have to change that much if you're working hard, but you need to be confident where you're going. Otherwise you say, you know what? I don't want to do that. Dave Ramsey says I shouldn't do that. Or my friends or family say I shouldn't do that. And you end up just where everybody else is. Exactly. I was making a living. I'm sure you were making a good living. I was fairly happy as far as like, I'm doing what I'm supposed to do, but I'm looking down the road and it's like, I don't want to do construction anymore. I don't want to build another custom home. I don't want to sit down and have another budget meeting and hear about, you know, their addition. And I'm also looking at, I'm building a business, which I think this is a a passion project. Yours, I'm building a business that's worth nothing, right? I'm building a business that it generates a job, 
But at the end of the day, I don't have something that I can sell. And absolutely, you talk about the Holy Grail. I think that multifamily is one of the Holy Grails because everybody wants to buy that business. You know, it's a business. It's a self-contained it little business that's easy to run. Yeah. And it's always, people always want to buy it. I love how you describe that because, yeah, let's say you and I get together and we buy a hundred unit apartment building. We essentially have a hundred customers that every month are writing us a check that are buying our product, which happens to be hopefully a nice, safe, clean place to live. Whereas I, and I can almost see it here from where I live now, we had, it was an $18 million contract that I helped put together at a hospital and $18 million contract. Do you know what I made off of that contract, Jennings? I don't. I made $0. I made $0 because I left that company and then that business came in and that business made a lot of money for the company that I was working for. Now I was able to leverage that into some career opportunities, but I said, you know what? Next time I spend five years working on something, I want this to be worth something, not only to me, but also to my family. Oh, I built a home for a lady who pretty much I despised. She hated me. It was a horrible relationship. <laughs> and I built this house, I don't know, maybe 10, 12 years ago, built it for $330,000. Yeah. Yeah. And I come to find out she sold it for like 750 grand. And I'm just oh, like, man. I, I yeah. you know, well, she put up her. the money and I'm, I'm glad, but it's like, I gave this lady a year of my life to make, yeah. I don't know what I made, 12% on the house. And so yeah. it's just like, I'm done building other people's companies. I'm done building other people's dreams. I've got yeah. to work on something that's going to make me money and that not have to trade time for it. So, yeah, absolutely. You know, rolling into like businesses. So, I bought a business last year. It was pretty cool, a little off the radar. It was like a, a pet company. Tell me oh, about well. these car washes because I see yeah. Tidal Wave and um, all these, yep. like even gas stations are building. There are these conveyor belt yeah. washes and everyone's on subscription yep. model. And they got to be profitable because they're building them everywhere in Charleston anyways. But what type of car washes are you in and, and what drew you into that? Yeah. So I looked at our first car wash with my uncle. We were checking out businesses. I used to say seven years ago. It's got to be about nine years ago now. I think it was 20, it was 2014 when we were checking these out. And what drew me to car washes is that I like demographic driven businesses, which is, you know, you brought it up a couple of times now. That's why I call multifamily the holy grail because there's this demographic wave right where people need a place to live so let's talk a little bit quickly about the fundamentals of car washes and then the financials and then kind of the future as well so uh, three f's i just it's the fundamentals of car washes <laughs> so if you're listening i want you to raise your hand kind of i can't see you obviously but raise your hand if you wash your car yourself and i mean like actual like in your driveway wash your car yourself and when I ask this question to rooms, let's say there's 20 people in a room, I usually get one, two, maybe three people that raise their hand. And I say, hey, great. Now, do you actually wash it? Or, oh, no, I actually have my kids wash it. Like a hand goes down, right? And that's typical. Like if 10, 15, maybe 20% of people actually wash their cars, most people hire somebody to do it or take it to a car wash. And a car wash is a lot like a dishwasher. This isn't a, a woman joke, by the way. So a dishwasher in your house is more efficient and it's more economical and it's better for the environment than actually washing your dishes washing, by hand. Yeah, yeah. yeah absolutely. It's because it's got all got these economies. Of, yeah, it's got all these economies of scale to it. It's the same way. And I remember when we were rolling out our car wash offerings to investors, somebody said, oh, well, wait till the environmentalists, you know, shut you down. Well, I'm an environmentalist. I love the environment. Here's the cool thing. We collect the water, we filter out the chemicals and different things. It's also more environmentally friendly than doing it in your driveway. Because I guarantee if you raise your hand and you said, I wash my car in my own driveway, you're not reclaiming the water and filtering out. <laughs> no. You know, the, no, like people don't do that. And you really can't, it's hard to do that. So people are quote unquote, leaving their driveways to wash their car. The business that we focus on within car washes, and by the way, I have, I own a car wash here in Asheville. And we have 18 car washes, which are called express tunnel car washes, as you mentioned, like those conveyor belts. Oh, okay. It's going to take about 15 years to fully build out the express tunnel car wash industry until we're at capacity. So we got, say, 10 to 15 years. What's interesting, what's challenging is that from a financial perspective, they're very profitable businesses. You get like 50% profit margins. And as you probably know, you've gone to one of yours. Ours is called Hurricane Express Wash. 
you know, you mentioned a tidal wave, I think it was. Yeah, there's a tidal um, wave. There's, I think there's an express yeah. in Charleston too. I think I remember seeing that. We got them all the way from Maryland down to Florida now. We're, we're buying, we're actually closing on some in Tennessee here this month. Actually, about six of them. They also, we have monthly recurring memberships. So if you're listening, you're like, oh yeah, I have one of those memberships. Businesses, private equity groups, they love monthly recurring revenue, just like we do, right? With our multifamily properties, Jennings, it's predictable and you can build a business around that. So, you know, from a financial perspective, they have good profit margins, they have loyal customers. And then one of the questions that I was always asked, I'll kind of relate this back to the medical device industry. When I showed, I showed Dr. Smith here a new product and Dr. Smith would say, that's great, Chris. What happens if something goes wrong? How do I take it out? And I call this the exit strategy, right? So when we go into an investment, Jennings, we want to know, okay, are we buying it at the right price? Is it going to cash flow? Are we going to make money? And how are we going to sell it? And that's what's great. Multifamily properties, there's almost always a ready buyer for it. Car washes, private equity groups, if you package them the right way, will pay a higher multiple than we pay for these. And the reason is, it's still a very fragmented industry. So if you look at multifamily, about 85% of multifamily properties, large multifamily properties are owned by institutional investors. You know, and you know, it's great because this is a professional industry. People wear suits, they work Monday through Friday. It's a little easier than the residential business, right? Car washes, it's the opposite. Only like 15% are owned by institutional owners. It's very fragmented. You have a lot of mom and pops. They pay their brother, you know, in law to manage their property off the books. They, you know, don't have proper accounting. They don't have national contracts in place. They don't have dress codes. They don't have uniformity between locations. So if you can come in and have a great operating team like we've built, we want to become like the Chick-fil-A of car washes where you have a predictable, high value car wash where you're going to get in and get out. And you're going to get a quality wash. And I'm not saying you can't get a better wash if you hire somebody to come to your house and pay 200 bucks to wash your car. Just like you can go buy a better chicken sandwich like I had with my son last night at the local restaurant, but it cost us $17, right? Right. Whereas at Chick-fil-A, I can pay a fraction, a quarter of that to get a chicken sandwich that's still might even be better in my opinion. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. So- We want to follow the trend, the fundamentals where people are going out of their driveways to wash their cars. We want to buy nice cash flowing businesses that we can improve just like we do with multifamily and then put them together as a portfolio and sell them, whether it's two, three, five, seven years down the road, which is just a different version of the value add strategy that I talk about in my book and that you all apply with your multifamily properties as well. Okay, so going back to your buddy who said, well, wait till the environmental shuts yeah. down. I mean, let's say times get tough, right? Economy go- yeah. is going to crap next year and, yeah. and everybody's tightening their belts. Inflation's out of control. They can't afford groceries. And what's going to say, you know what? I'm paying twenty nine ninety nine to, to wash me in my wife's car and I only am going like once every month or two. You know what? Maybe I should just chop that expense. Is that going to happen to you? Yeah, that's a great question. So let's look at kind of these affordable luxuries that we look at. And you can look at these trends, right? So let's say, you know, the economy slows down. Well, maybe people don't go to the movies, but they still get Netflix, right? They're still paying their 15 bucks a month for Netflix. Here's the thing. If the economy slows down, you have other aspects that push and pull on the drivers of this business. So number one, I already said people can get a better quality wash going somewhere else than if they go to one of our car washes. That's not what we're there to provide. We're there to provide something that makes you feel good, provides a good value. If you look at the top five reasons why people wash their car, quality is number four. People want predictability, they want a good value, and they want to feel good. So if anybody's gotten their car washed, it feels good to be in a clean car, right? It's like getting a haircut, which I need a little bit of one myself right now. It just gives you a little boost to your mood. My kids love it. You know, we go to the grocery store, we go to Chick-fil-A, we go to the car wash. It's kind of like a little loop that we make. And you're like, this is fun. You know, it's a couple hours and you know, a little bit of family time. And it's a fun- and they are fun. Like they're really fun and to go through. Exactly. You know, all the yeah. lights and the stuff and the kids yeah. love it. I mean, shoot, I like yeah. it. <laughs> it's fun. Yeah. It's an affordable luxury. The other thing is if the economy slows down as it is right now, people have a harder time affording a new car. 
Well, if you have a car that's a little bit older, you're going to spend a little bit more on maintenance. So if you own a car and you're renting your apartment, your car, it probably is your most valuable possession that you own and you want to take care of it. So, you know, it's a nice day. You go wash your car. You got a 30, as you said, $29.95, $30 membership a month. You can wash your car every week at our car wash. So if you wash it every week, you're spending what, $7.50 to wash your car. And it's actually more affordable the more you wash it. And then your car, instead of, you know, maybe getting a new car, you're like, you know what, I'm going to maintain my car. You know, I'm going to keep it a little bit nicer. And you actually end up saving money kind of in the grand scheme of things when it comes to that. So, you know, when the economy's down, when people are facing times, you know, that are a little tougher, they seek out things that make them feel better. That's why people drink more, right? When the economy goes down and, you know, if people can't afford- And they wash their car more. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if it's an older car, they, they tend to wash it more. And, you know, coincidentally, you end up washing your car more as well if you have a newer car because you want to keep it looking nice. So it tends to fall in that affordable luxury bucket. I was saying I had a construction company, we had a fleet of trucks and they built there this tidal wave right by our office. And yeah. when they opened, I Run went in there through. and bought six memberships and our trucks were always spotless. And I still yeah. got the membership. I sold the construction company. I still got the membership, me and my wife. And you know, those car washes where you drive in the bay. Yeah. I'm glad you're not into those. I hate those things. It's like stressing you out. You're running out of time. <laughs> the cor- the machine's beeping at oh, you. Oh yeah. You the quarters. No, no, oh. no. Yeah. And there's, yeah. Yeah. And that's one of the things that we look for, you know, like we actually, and the w- one we have now, it's a automatic in bay, but it's a big robot that washes your car. It's actually a really nice quality wash. It's touchless, but you know, we're upgrading our vacuums now because yeah, it's like, I got a thing full of quarters in my car. Whereas, you know, it actually makes a lot of sense for us because we upgrade to the credit card machines. If I run my credit card now, it just charges you by the minute. So not only do you not feel stressed, but you probably spend about 50% more time vacuuming your car because you want to get it actually clean. So instead of spending two bucks, you know, on the vacuum, you spend three bucks on the vacuum. So it gives customers the ability to do a better job when they're doing that. And it's actually more profitable for us as well. Well, and you don't have idiots trying to break in and steal your quarters either. Which we've had that happen. We When we bought one of our washes, we had somebody actually, um, they broke the pedestal and took, uh, they made off, three guys made off with like 1200 bucks in cash. It was also on, on Halloween here this past year. But, you know, fortunately we had insurance, we've upgraded those stations and yeah, you can, you know, give cameras and all that sort of stuff. But, uh, you know, it's a business, things happen um, when you deal with that. So you lower your risk when you, when you change to those technologies. So how do you buy one? I mean, is, is it a franchise that you're buying into? Do, do they source the land? Do you have to do all that? What's the upfront capital needed and, and how fast can you expect a return? Yeah, great question. So if you go out and you want to buy a wash, a car wash, I would suggest you look at something like I just mentioned, like we have here locally, which is an automatic in-bay. You know, you can buy one of these car washes for, you know, somewhere around a million dollars, maybe a million and a half dollars for one, two, three bays, you know, that you're buying. It can be a nice, profitable little business. So you're talking like three self-wash bays and one on the end is automatic where you just drive in and it washes a car for you? Is that what you're talking about? Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. So we have two, so you can drive up and do that. Now, what we focus on, what we partner with investors are the express tunnel car washes. These are going to be more scalable. They're going to be more profitable and they're going to have a bigger exit on the back end. The challenge is with these, you're looking at 5 million, sometimes mm-hmm. even higher than that when it comes yeah. to the cost for a location. But these things really, really turn out a lot of revenue. So you get in there. But the you nice can thing get is, debt on that, right? I mean, you're not having absolutely. to put up five million in cash. No, no. We get banks like to lend against these. Actually, right now in this environment, the lending terms aren't that dissimilar from multifamily in terms of loan to value, in terms of rates. You can get small business association loans in some cases for these washes, and they're typically profitable from day one. We have a couple of development sites that we're doing. Obviously, those are going to take a little bit longer to be profitable. They're not going to be profitable from day one. You know, but our investors, you know, looking at these, they can expect healthy cash flow from the first day that we run these locations. And then as we implement our technology, which is our, we have a proprietary CRM, customer resource management software. We have an app that we put in. We have our national contracts, which help lower our operating costs. So we have the whole operating program that we implement with our team helps increase the profitability and increase the value of these. 
So, you know, we're looking at, we acquired uh, 18 here in the past year. Um, we're looking to double or triple that here over the next year. And are those ground up bills or you're, are you buying out existing locations? Yeah. So we like to buy locations that we can rebrand, but we're not opposed to building from the ground up. It's just a different, a slightly different model with respect to that. So something you'd rebrand, I mean, it would already have to be a conveyor belt type. Like you'd buy a tidal wave and convert it to your brand. Is that what you're saying? Well, that's right. Now, tidal wave. So we like to focus Jennings on operators that have, say, four or five or less locations. So okay. typically what we're doing, so we have three locations under contract right now. So those three are from a single owner. We'll buy those three locations. We'll rebrand them. We'll apply our national contracts. We'll put our systems into place for that. And we'll upgrade all those locations and put them in underneath our Hurricane Express wash brand. Gotcha. So some dude back in the day, he bought a piece of land. He went online. He found the, the company that sells these machines. He paid them whatever millions of dollars to build this and set it up. And he's been operating yep. it. And now he's got two or three yep. of them. He's not a yep. national chain, but he's Correct. got in place revenue streams. And so you're paying him a premium or a multiple on his income to buy him out. Yeah. That's right. And that's what we look for. We say, hey, look, you know, Jennings, you've been running this. You're like, hey, I'm like, why do you want to sell it? You're like, well, my kids don't want to run it. I want to go do something else. And this isn't something that I really want to manage now. Because a lot of owner and operators, if they have a couple locations, they're probably, like I just said, they're probably owner operators. We're, we're owners. We have an operating company that goes in and does that. And our investors are, they're 100% passive. So they don't have to come in and do any of the operations. So it gives our investors an opportunity to have ownership in these investments, but not and and exposure and get the benefits, but not having to deal with the headaches. Like if somebody takes one of your uh, pay stations on right. four a.m. on on Halloween morning. Well, because it's I mean it's an operational business. I mean uh, you it's know you've got to have somebody business. there Correct. probably. I mean stuff stuff yep. breaks. You got to refill the soap, et cetera, et cetera. Exactly. You gotta empty out That's the right. trash cans, and I mean yeah, it's, it's not yep. just to set it and forget it type thing, but still, you know, fifty percent margins is hard to argue with. Yeah, exactly. That's exactly right. Yeah. Plus, those are prime locations, right? You know, even in 20 years when that equipment breaks down and is no good, I mean, you still have usually a very coveted commercial location. You know, the dirt is worth a lot. Yeah, because we are focused on high traffic locations. That's a great point. So, yeah, these pieces of property should maintain, just like, right, McDonald's, there's the old saying that McDonald's is a real estate company, you know, fueled by the restaurant company. And, you know, they focused on buying high quality pieces of real estate, high traffic, valuable pieces of real estate. In the case of these locations, it's very similar. So let's say I'm an accredited investor. I want to get involved. You're like, okay, cool. We're about to buy these three. You can get in on this. I guess it's a, a separate syndication or is it one big umbrella company? But I, I throw 100000 in. What can I kind of expect? Yep. Yeah. So that's always the trick question. So I never really like to jump into specific returns because every deal is different. So like our development deal is going to look a little bit different, you know, than say like the three locations that we're buying here. But typically investors can see, I mean, you can see double digit annualized cash flows from these. And you know, you're typically seeing, you know, returns that are going to be higher than multifamily deals. So you can see, you know, really healthy kind of mid teen, even high teen returns on these types of, of properties for investors. But again, every deal is different. That would be realized on the exit, right? The, the eventual that's exit to private equity or something. That's yeah. exactly right. Yeah. So if you say, hey, Chris, I don't want you to beat around the bush. I want to actually you know, get some details on this on our website, nextlevelincome.com. You can click on the invest link, schedule an appointment, and we're happy to, to go through and see if this is a good fit for you and share more details with you. Gotcha. Gotcha. Yeah. Do you ever refinance them? I mean, what lending is it? Ooh, is it yeah. like a five or seven year loan? Or are they giving you longer yeah. terms than that? Or yeah, that's actually right. They're typically commercial loans, so that's not an unreasonable period of time. Say five to seven years. They amortize typically. So you know, we're getting good debt on these properties. Are they amortized over five to seven years? No, no. They're typically oh, amortized over a long. Yeah, they're typically amortized. So, so say you might get a five year loan amortized over twenty years is not an unreasonable okay. period. So that's similar. Yeah, it's going to be similar to multifamily. Maybe it's 50, 100 basis points higher, a couple hundred basis points higher, depending on the location, than a multifamily deal. But banks actually, you know, you can find, you know, like we used a local credit union 
a lot of times banks like these because they're nice cash flow businesses. They're secured by real estate. They're also secured by the equipment. And it's the last piece. You know, a lot of people love multifamily real estate because of the depreciation that offsets the income. Mm-hmm. These have a lot of depreciation, which is really nice if that's something that you're looking for as a feature of the investments that you're seeking. Gotcha. So would this be something that you would encourage somebody to go out there and try, or is it pretty much, there's a lot, a lot to it. You know, you you need to be an expert in this space to dip your toe in the water. Yeah, that's a great question. So I would say if you look at the kind of the hierarchy when it comes to real estate, so I would say, yes, this is a real estate investment, but it's operational real estate. So multifamily self-storage, like, okay, you know, you can go kind of hire like I would call it an off the shelf type of operator or property management company. When it comes to short term rentals, car washes, like senior housing, these types of real estate, the operations is going to be the make or break when it comes to the returns of the business. So I would say if you want to do this, number one, become an expert in the area or two, partner with somebody that's an operator in this space and do that. So, you know, you do not want to get into this. I actually just had a conversation earlier today with a gentleman. He said, hey, can you walk me through this? And we were talking, I was like, well, who's going to operate this? He's like, I guess I am. He's like, well, what do you know about car washes? Well, I know it's across the street from my office. I'm like, okay, let's back up a little bit here, you know? I said, you need to be conscious of what you're getting into. So again, when it comes to these operational types of real estate, I would tread lightly. You need to educate yourself a lot more than if you're buying, again, you know, a piece of residential real estate or multifamily or self-storage, because you really have to understand the operations and either have somebody that can help you with that or learn about it yourself. No, I think that's fair. And I mean, we have people that talk about like assisted living facilities and the numbers yes. look amazing, right? And They're great. It's like, well, yeah. yeah, but you're running a nursing staff and you're dealing with the government and Medicare and Medicaid and insurance yeah. companies and billing and people are dying and people got to be moved in and moved out and all this compliance. And like, that's not the same as owning a self-storage facility or a multifamily. Yeah. Now that being said, let's say you're fortunate you can go out and find somebody like a, a manager right? So you say, hey, I want to buy this. And you find a local manager that manages other car washes. Okay, great. You could pay that manager, just like I can pay my friend's company to manage my short-term rentals, but he charges 20% off the top. So, you know, when you start to get into that, if you are going to buy one of these businesses, make sure that you account for the cost to manage this by somebody that can actually do it. It's going to be a lot different than the cost to manage you know, one of these other properties that's not as highly operational. Yeah, absolutely. I think if my play, if I was going to do it, would be, okay, use my connections to source the deal and raise the capital, get the debt, and then have a partner go. that's, hey, he's running this one over here. Let's get him over here, make him a partner, give him skin in the game and get it going. And then that way I'm not just buying another job. It sounds like what we did. Yeah. So yeah. That's, <laughs> I think that would be a strategy I would endorse because that's exactly what we did. We have our director of operations on the car wash side, built out that team, national contracts. We employed a consulting company in addition to that to make sure we're doing everything right. Spend a year doing that, building that out before we acquired that first location. Gotcha. Yeah. Because I mean, the operations are everything. And that's something that I've dug into a lot with my portfolio as it's grown. It's like, I got to get really good at asset management. I have to become an expert in this field. And, or if I'm not, I've got to find the people that can help me because same thing, even though apartments, like, oh, just hire the property manager and you're good. I mean, not exactly. (laughs) You (laughs) You just got to watch the manager. Right. You you got to keep that thing on track. And once it's full and click along, you've got a great team. It is pretty easy, but You've got to know what you're doing to get to that point. Well said. Absolutely. Awesome. Well, Chris, tell me about how does the um, the infinite banking tie into this? What does that have to do with anything? Yeah. So that was fun diving into the car wash side of things because it's, uh, to me, it's an exciting business. It's something that's a little newer in the process than multifamily, which we've been doing for about 10 years. But sometimes I've been doing even longer than that is cash value life insurance. People call it infinite banking bank on yourself, family banking. Uh, What we've actually done is developed a strategy which we call the investment optimizer. And this also is on our website. People can uh, check out our webinar and our white paper for free at nextlevelincome.com. There's a banking link that you can click on and check that out. But 13 years ago, I started these policies, my wife and I, 
right before my son was born. I mentioned he's going to be 13. Okay. And we said, okay, let's just make this simple. Instead of putting our money into a 529 plan, let's put it into a life insurance policy. The benefits that I thought would be, hey, if something happens to me, my father passed away when I was five. Okay. So I said, if something happens to me, I know that my son is going to be taken care of from a financial perspective. So that was very comforting to me. Also, we structured it so that we had cash inside that policy that we could use to pay for college. So it served two purposes. The other thing, is, and I learned more about this, is I could use that cash for other things like buying a car, financing my own vehicles. We started building houses like you did Jennings. So we'd build spec homes. I'd borrow against the policy. I'd buy a piece of property. We'd use that property as collateral to finance the build of the house. We'd say take $50,000 and turn it into 100. We recycle that money back into our policy, increase the cash value and the amount of the insurance and do it all over again. I had a conversation with my agent at the time and he said, man, I wish everybody that I worked with, Chris, kind of had the creativity and did what you were doing. And I thought, why didn't you tell me I could do this? You know, it, it was frustrating to me. I went on this journey to find out more information about how to do this, ultimately got licensed as an insurance agent again, because I was licensed over 20 years ago when I worked for State Farm. And with my partners, we have the strategy called the investment optimizer. So what we do is we help investors structure policies to maximize the cash value inside the policy, minimize the cost of the insurance. And basically, if you're an investor and you're already putting money into syndications, you can get all these benefits that I was just talking about with the insurance policy. And it essentially pays for itself because you're blending the two strategies together. It's hard to get into in a lot of depth right now, which is why we have the webinar up there. But that's in a nutshell what we do. Yeah, no, I've, I've been looking into that. I've read the, I think it's like, think like the Rockefellers or what would the Rockefellers yeah. do? Yeah. And just extremely interesting on how their thoughts are with the trusts and keeping the money together and how death and taxes and splitting the money just dilutes everything and how the, yes. the, the families that are getting it together, they're doing it with a structured plan instead of okay. just haphazardly buying crap and inheriting and losing all this stuff to taxes. No. So, No, I'll throw this out there. So I will say this, if you're listening to this podcast, you think differently. You're not thinking like the Dave Ramseys and the Susie Ormans. You are thinking more like the Rockefellers. And what the ultra rich do is way different. You can take things like insurance contracts, these are private contracts, and you can literally put in place predictable multi-generational wealth strategies that are absolutely breathtaking with what you can accomplish. And I don't know anything else, any other vehicle that you can do. Real estate's amazing, but when you blend it with a strategy like this, you can literally create wealth for your future family like nothing else, it's amazing. Well, there you go. You got to head over to nextlevelincome.com, grab that webinar. I know I'm going to do that. Check it out. But Chris, it's been an awesome, awesome interview. Thanks for jumping on. I appreciate you uh, taking time away from the car washes to share some strategies with us. It's been super interesting. So yeah. So it's the best place to reach you at nextlevelincome.com. Yeah. I mentioned it a couple of times here right now. You can get a free copy of our book there. You can check out that webinar on Investment Optimizer. And you can also contact me if you have any questions that I wasn't able to get, get into depth on today. Feel free to reach out through our contact link there as well. Yeah. If you're looking to invest in car washes, sounds like Chris is your man. All right. Well, have a great day. And all you listening out there, I appreciate you for giving us some time. It's our most valuable asset and resource. And make sure you spend some time this week to unlock your life. Peace. This is the podcastfactory.com.